It's a terrible day for flying, but always a good day to spend some money on a vintage 310. Let's go annual the 1959 Cessna 310 Harvey. The old 310 quick start, make sure the gear is down, move everything forward. Master and mags on, generators on, fuel flow, prime, low, high, prime on the right, crank them up. Clear! sucker hole down there. The takeoff out of here today would be right into the soup, right after rotate. Not today. The previous owner used to call these annual inspections the weight and balance. You wait for the bill and you rebalance your checkbook. Jordan, how long have you been working on Harvey now? Five years. Five years. One of the first planes that Jordan's ever worked on. and She's still working on getting your uh, A&P yes. license. Uh, she's been studying hard and getting a scholarship to help pay for the expenses of going. What, what program do you want to get go to to wrap this thing up? It's Baker's Aeronautical School in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And that, with your experience, what's the experience they require? How many years? Is it two years of full-time experience? Yeah, about 32 months of on-the-job training mm -hmm. or 18 months at a certified school to be qualified. So I'm well over my time. You're well over your time. Yeah, you've been doing it for so many years. But you've also now have to test the pass a practical test, an oral examination, and a written test as well. Yes. Correct, and so you've been studying for all that. Yes. And all you need is the money to go. Pretty much. Get it knocked out. Very close. What's most of the expense of the traveling? Yeah, tuition and traveling, because you have the cost for the DME, and then you have the cost for all the tests, and then lodging to stay in Tennessee and travel to go there. So. What do you, What's the uh, school cost approximately? It's a thousand dollar DME fee, and then about fifteen hundred dollars for the tuition. Okay, well, that's all right. We need more AMPs. Let's go, Jordan.
<laughs> these cowlings just pop off with these zoo fasteners. The nose bowls come off in two halves. How many is that? Three, six, twelve, only 24 more to go. <laughs> You can take a quick reading on these spark plugs, but just taking a good look at them. And then you want to keep track of them over here in this tray. One, three, one, three, and five, top and bottom. As each cylinder has two sets of spark plugs times two engines. <laughs> so the cylinders on the 0470 are numbered two, four, six, and then one, three, and five. And you can see the numbers right there. The red band indicates a chromed cylinder. All of these chromed. So we'll just pull the top plugs for now, leave the bottom plugs in for the compression test. We'll pull those out later and clean them after the compression test. And here's one of Harvey's secret powers, the Gammy fuel injectors, which perfectly match the fuel flow to each cylinder for a real smooth running engine. The compression test is one of the first things you want to do, obviously because the engines are warm after your run-up, and it's also going to quickly determine how the rest of the annual inspection is going to go for the airplane. Because when you start getting into cylinder work on these airplanes, you're getting into a bunch of work and expense. So the first thing you want to do is spin the prop, of course, with the mags off until you get the compression up on the cylinder you want to test. You can just feel it. Jordan's just feeling it with her fingertip there. You gotta thread the little compression tester adapter into each cylinder as you test it. You wanna ease the pressure onto it so that the prop doesn't get away from Jordan. It's a two person job. I'm showing uh, 76. Yeah. Woohoo! 78 over 80. Jordan, wiggle that prop just a little bit to demonstrate how that makes a difference on your compression test. You want to get those rings set right at top dead center and with the rings set correctly in the cylinder. So we're measuring the difference. Stand by. There, the pressure's off. So we're measuring the difference of 80 PSI of air going into the cylinder versus how many PSI of air the cylinder is holding. And you're basically checking for leaks out the openings, the two valves, intake and exhaust valve, and or the rings. You hear that leaking? You, you can troubleshoot. If you've got low compression on the cylinder, you can troubleshoot where that may be leaking from by listening to where the air is hissing out of. If you go to the air intake, to the what would be a carburetor, or the fuel injection, or the air filter, you could just tell if it's coming out the intake valve. Go to the exhaust pipe if you want to think it's coming out of the exhaust valve or go to the breather tube, the crankcase breather tube, if you think it's coming out of the rings. You hear that singing coming out of there? So that five PSI or so is escaping through the rings. And there is gonna usually be some compression leaking past the rings. Now this one we got, uh, well, it's about 70, but listen, Hear that? That one's coming out of the exhaust valve on number five. Don't cry if this is bad. Oh, <laughs> don't make me cry, Jordan. <laughs> so Jordan's taking the bore scope down the um, spark plug hole of the number, what cylinder are we on there? Five. Number five cylinder. To take a look at that exhaust valve and see why yeah. that was hissing so much. So bore scope is basically just a camera. And tell us what you're looking for there. So if it's bright red, it's burnt, and it's basically bad. Um, you want to look for like moon shapes or oval shapes on the top. See how everything looks like it's wearing evenly? So that looks really good. And no red? You don't see any red on that one? No. Yeah, it's It'll a color It'll be pretty camera. bright, distinct red. Mm -hmm. And then what we want to do is we want to open up the valve. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to look at the seat of the valve and make sure there's no carbon or junk in there. Yeah, is there a big chunk of carbon that sometimes will hang up these valves on a yeah, compression sometimes. test? 
but everything looks really good. I'd really like to get in there and wiggle that thing just to see <laughs> that the guide is good. I wish. That'd be nice, huh? <laughs> and then that's the intake. And that looks just beautiful. Go, Harvey. Yep. No crying today. <laughs> Jordan had another excellent tip here. We finish up with the number one cylinder compression. It's up on top dead center. Leave the prop there, and now you're all set up for... The mag test, the mag timing check, the timing of the magnetos to the engine. So the compression check good on all 12 cylinders. Now we got to clean all 24 spark plugs. Stand by for that scintillating spark plug cleaning action next in the next video. Thanks so much for your support of this channel. And with your support, it helps keep this vintage 1959 Cessna maintained in the manner that she's become accustomed to over the years. Thanks for your support. See you here. Now it's time to play Smoke Them If You Got Them. We're going to do a smoke test on this exhaust system here which is really important on a single engine airplane because you get your uh, cabin heat from your exhaust system on a single engine airplane. That's not the case with the 310. But I do have a little exhaust staining going on here on the number three cylinder. I want to check for, oh, yeah, maybe right there. What's going on, guys? Yep, there it is. Okay, so if when I blow it out, you should see it first. If it's coming through that gasket, you should see the smoke from on the that left, gasket. But it looks like it's on the right. It is on the right. So what the hell is leaking? Yeah.